Uh, I had uh, quite a few friends who were in the fire department. Uh, they kept trying to talk me into joining and I never did. And I witnessed a wreck one afternoon and rather than call 911, I called my friends and said, hey, here's a wreck near your house and just watched what they do and thought it, you know, I'd really enjoy it. So they said, come up and fill out some paperwork and that was it as a volunteer department uh, about 23 years ago when I started. I did that for 14 years. They paid for my, uh, to get to EMT so I could be a responder. Uh, I took that EMT and got a job at a private ambulance service here in Forsyth. Uh, I liked hearing dispatch more and more and was more intrigued with what they did and had a couple of visits to our old center and I like to do this. So I applied and got the job. I've been here 17 years now. I'm only 35 and I look like this. That's how stressful the job is. <laughs> It takes a little bit to get used to, you know, and there's a job for everybody. Everybody has their place, everybody has their job. Not everybody can do this, but being that first point, knowing whether the outcome is good or bad in the end, you did everything you could in that moment of their worst day ever to try to make it better. It's the gratification you'll never have in any other job. So paramedics, fire, police, they all see it, but they're the second ones. We're the first ones, we set the mood, we get the information make the day better. When you call 911, uh, our main thing is please stay calm. The more you can give us information in a calm manner, the better. We need your location, the age of the patient, are they conscious, are they breathing, what exactly is wrong with them. That's the information we need right off the bat. We have to ask these questions no matter what. We can understand you're, you're wanting help now, but you let us get this information and we'll get help there as quick as we can to you. We work in our CAD system, we accept the call. Another dispatcher in the room is getting your fire and your ambulance on the way to you while I'm talking to you. So you may think that I'm not trying to get help on the way, but in reality they are actually already on the way while I'm talking to you. Uh, the technology is getting faster and quicker. We can locate your phone a lot faster now. Uh, we can get calls dispatched a lot faster. We can transfer you to somebody else, law enforcement, a lot faster. As uh, technology increases, the speed at which we can do our job increases. So we do get help faster to people who need it. I used to. Uh, every uh, little old lady was my grandmother. Every little old man was my granddad. Uh, every little child was one of my daughters. Um, I tried not to think about that a lot, you know, go home and hug them, call my wife when somebody had a bad day, but over time you actually get used to it. I know it's hard to imagine getting used to dealing with trauma every day, but you have to let it go, uh, otherwise you'll, you'll drive yourself crazy, but it's treat it like any other job. It's a job, you leave work at work, leave home at home. It takes a while to do that, but it's beneficial after a while. Hard day is any time anyone loses their life or is in any kind of severe trauma. Any time a family loses their house in a fire, uh, loses a loved one in any kind of way, those are, those are really bad days for us. Uh, that means the public's getting hurt. Yeah, that's what we're here to try to correct. Doesn't make it any easier for us. Even though we do deal with the bad days, they are worth going through when you have the good days, when you save somebody's life, when you get the fire put out before it damages the home. Anytime you birth a baby, those are all good days that make those bad days just worth it.